me know. Um, so let's get started. Um, we are going to start off by stretching our quads. Um, so kneeling down. If you've got a sort of sofa or something or a chair behind you, you can hook your foot over that. If not, you can just hold on to it. And then we're just gently squeezing our glute forwards, getting a stretch down the front of the quad there. So just gently squeeze forward to feel that stretch, release. And we're just going to do that a few times, so just loosening up those quads before we go into the rest of the session. And getting some feedback. Thank you, Emily. Good on the sound. So pulsing through a few more times, stretching through. Now, if you swap legs, I'm not going to swap legs because we've got stitches in this thigh, so I don't want to be stretching it, but if you just swap legs now, kneel on the other knee, push the glute forwards. We're not pushing forwards like that. We're literally just engaging, pushing forwards with the glutes so that we're getting that stretch into the front there. So just a few more pulses on the other side. Lovely. Now we're going into a hip flexor stretch, and today we're going to be talking lots about hip extension, so this is a really key part. Again, if you've got a step or something, you can put your foot on, foot up there. If not, you're just going to do it in a lunge position. And again, I want you to push the glute forward so you're getting stretch into the front of the hip that you've got the leg going back. That was a very complicated way of saying it. The leg that's going back. Push that glute forward to be able to stretch at the front there. And then what I want you to think about, at some point I'll get around to taking off my own sweater, but it's a bit too cold at the moment. If you imagine your pelvis as a bowl of water, and I want you to make sure that even with that leg back behind you, that bowl of water is level. So if you think about the front of your pelvis, imagine just the um, waistband of your trousers, whatever you're wearing, rather than as you bring that leg back, the waistband up and down and all the water, if this was a bowl of water keeping at the front, I want you to draw up at the front as you squeeze the glute forwards. Okay, and then we're just pulsing into it. So a few more. So you should feel a stretch at the front there, but mostly, let's sort of legs, I want you to be thinking about that neutral pelvis, and I'm going to talk lots about it today. This is a really key one, pretty much for anybody. As you heard me say many times, we spend so much time sitting down and end up with tight hip flexors, which is a problem, A, in terms of those hip flexors being tight, but if we have tight hip flexors, we tend to find that our glutes start to not engage so well. So we want to make sure we're loosening up the hip flexors and then starting to engage the glutes, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. But to engage those glutes, we want to be in a neutral pelvis position. So often when that leg comes back behind us, we think we've got hip extension, we think, you can on stretching, we think we've got the leg back behind us, but actually we have got the leg back behind us, but we haven't got real true hip extension, we've just kicked down the front there. Okay, we'll talk about it more as we go on. Let's carry on with your warm up. So taking your legs um, far apart, as far as they're going to comfortably go, and then reaching down to right hand to left foot, left hand to right foot. So we're just feeling that stretch down the side there, starting to get the heart rate up. Starting just to mobilise the body, but everything's still feeling fairly easy, just warming up. A few more on each side. Lovely, and then you can take your feet back to the middle, and let's just do a nice stretch over the side, so we're stretching down the side there, and then to the other side. Once more, and again, and then just taking the elbows, and I want you to bring one elbow to the front, other to the back, so your hips are still facing forwards, the upper back that we're trying to move, then to the other side, so we're just loosening up that upper back again as runners, as triathletes, particularly as swimmers, we really need this rotation in the upper back, so hips are still facing forwards, Upper back just rotating. You might find you're tighter on one side than the other. We all tend to have one side that tends to be a little bit tighter. Okay, so going into our main set today, it's a sort of repeating format. We begin with a glute hold. Let me just bring you down to my level on the floor so you can see. Um, so we're going with a glute hold. 
first round will be the sort of basics rounds, and then if you want to progress it from there, we'll progress it in the future rounds. Each um, exercise will do for 60 seconds. If you can't hold it for 60 seconds, please always work to your level. So don't work harder than you can. Challenge yourself. Try and see if you can progress it a little bit. Don't get stuck and going, oh, I can only do 30 seconds. Only try in 30 seconds. Over time, you should be progressing. But don't work harder than you can. Make sure you're using the right muscles. We're looking for quality, not quantity. So we'll do it for 60 seconds. If you need to swap at 30, that's fine. Um, if you need just to take a break and come back to it, that's fine as well. So pushing up into our glute hold. So uh, heels towards our fingers so that we know that our feet are nice and close to our body. Pushing up into that glute hold, so straight line from the knees down to the shoulders. And then from there, either staying on two legs if you're not confident on a single leg hold, otherwise we're taking it out to a single leg hold. So in terms of our technique, we're making sure that we're not arching through the lower back there, so keeping that straight line, knee down to shoulder. If you feel that you're feeling it in your lower back, think about, again, keeping that neutral pelvis. Think hip bones coming towards the nose. So getting those glutes really working, push through the heel to get the bum working as well. When I say glutes, I mean bum. Keep breathing, keep relaxed. That's 30 seconds, so if you do want to swap sides, swap sides, but otherwise we're going for the whole minute on each side. If you want to make it a little bit harder or really challenge yourself on the stability, you can take your arms out of the equation, so just cross the arms so you're using your elbows to push down with. If you need the elbows down, that's absolutely fine. Always work to your level, progress as you can, make sure you're always trying to move on, but like I say, there's no point in doing it just for the sake of it if you're not using the right muscles. Lovely, so swapping onto the other side, so probably best to set up both feet together, pushing up, and then other leg up. Now, I'm dropping down slightly on this side. My hips are lower than they should be because I can't quite straighten that quad because of the state there's a few stitches in there, hopefully coming out this week. But ideally, you're looking for a straight line from the knee down to the shoulder. So pushing down through the heel to get that glute working. If you're feeling it in your lower back, then reset, try the two foot option. Um, reset, take a break, we'll go back to it. So always just trying to work a little bit harder, but if you're feeling the wrong muscles working, so if you're using your lower back rather than your glutes here, then don't, don't carry on pushing on using the wrong muscles. We want to get the right muscles to work. 15 seconds to go. So today's session, we're going to be working on these big glute max muscles here, the ones that are responsible for pulling the leg back behind us, and I'll talk more about that in a sec using these sort of side glutes as the glute knee muscles, which go into that now, so starting off just with clams, easy to do, no kick needed, so legs in line with the body, so feet in line with the body, opening up the top leg. If you can't feel it, double check you're not leaning back as you go, so if you can't feel it, lean into the mat. Keep it slow, remember the bit that you're working the most is at the top here, so if you're saying, oh I can't feel it, and you're going straight back down again, and spending more time down here, that might be why. So really, it's not about how high the knee goes, but make sure you're taking it to your end range and hold it for a second or so at the top there. This is the bit where we're working the hardest. So keep drawing up, working, you should feel it. I've talked about it being your line dancing, line dancing muscles. So if I was to be line dancing, like I always do, hands on the hips where my thumb's coming in there. That's about where we want to feel working. Lovely, just a bit it, swap onto the other side. So feet in line with body, bands of turbo in the way, opening up there. Better to keep your, your body straight, just to make sure you're aligned. If you want to be up on your elbow, you can, but ideally um, keep your uh, head down on the floor. So keeping on opening up, again, feeling it working. So it's all single leg options. Now, if you were with me on Tuesday, we were doing a little kind of assessment, walking through your body, finding out whether you were stronger on one side than the other. If you haven't done that session, go back and look in the videos on Facebook and you'll be able to see that session. That's a really good way of finding out if you have got imbalances in your body. If you have, then it's worth doing some more on the weaker side. Today, we're not doing that. Today, we're just doing the single leg stuff. But again, be aware if one side is weaker than the other. Love it. jumping up. If you've got a step, it'll be useful right now. If you haven't, don't worry at all. So, 
We're standing, I'll show you on the step, but you could just be standing on the floor, and you're going to pull one leg back behind you. Now, what I want you to make sure when you do this, let me just bring you back up where you can see. When you do this, you need to make sure that you're keeping that neutral pelvis. So what you don't want to do is pull the leg back behind you, and as I was saying at the beginning, take the water out the front. You want to try and keep that front waistband, if we imagine waistband as where your pelvis is, you want to keep the front waistband level as we pull the leg back behind you, and that is to get that glute working. Okay, so if you're joining with me now, pulling that leg back behind you, keeping the pelvis level, so keeping that neutral pelvis, making sure that as you pull the leg back, you don't end up with the pelvis dipping down at the front. Now this is the most effective position for us to be engaging our glutes when we're running. Our leg is effectively coming back behind us, you carry on, we put the foot down, our leg and glute engages to pull it back, which therefore sends us forwards. And the more effective that we have that glute working in pulling that leg back behind us, or staying stationary and therefore pulling us forwards, the better we're going to be with our running. The glutes are really important muscles, they're really fatigue resistant, so they'll keep on going for longer, they will just stabilise our body, but they're the powerhouse, they're the ones that are really fueling our running, so getting them working in the most effective position is really important, that sort of size. And if we're, um, if we're just, like I say, tipping the water out the front and therefore not really getting hip extension, we're not using them nearly as effectively as we could be. So we want to make sure we can bring that leg back behind us, look down, double check, are you managing to separate the thighs? A lot of people do this and they think they're doing it and actually they're just bending that foot behind, so they're getting the feet apart, but they're not getting the thighs apart. So we want to get that bum muscle working to pull the leg back behind to get the thighs separating from each other. Sounds simple, it can actually be quite hard and we want to make sure it's the glutes doing it, not our lower back. So really focus, it's often just that brain to body coordination, brain saying, bum, work now, don't let the other muscles pick up the slack for you. I always talk about the bum muscle being like the, the annoying person in the office who never does what, what they're meant to do, or oh, always on my description and somebody else always has to do it for them. The glutes are kind of like that, there's always other muscles getting involved, doing the job when they should be, so this is their job to pull that leg back behind you. Lovely. So that is your first round. We're now going into a core challenge where we're going to do a minute in each. We're doing a front plank, side plank. I need to stop moving this, don't I? Um, a front plank, side plank. Sorry, Instagram people. Um, and seeing how long you can go. So we're doing a minute in each. If you can't hold it for a minute, just take a break and join in in the next one. So front plank can either be bent arm or straight arm. We'll start off with that and then I'll tell you what's coming next. So let's go. One minute starting now. So with our plank, we're making sure that we've got a straight line from our shoulders down to our heels. If you're on your elbows, that's absolutely fine. Either way, make sure that either the hand or the elbow is pretty much underneath that shoulder. So you don't want it right far out in front. That's going to make it a lot harder. And we've got quite a few rounds of these to go. Thinking about engaging the core, but remember when we do, when we say core, we mean glutes as well. And you should be feeling them from previous rounds. So certainly keeping those glutes tight, keeping the core engaged, making sure that we're not sagging through like that, or that we haven't got a bum moving in the air. So straight line all the way through. We've got about 20 seconds to go on this front plank. Then we're going into side plank, which can either be a straight arm or a bent arm. I would suggest bent arm just because we're doing quite a lot of planking today and it's often your shoulders that give up before your core. So let's save the shoulders and up to you, but I would go um, bent arm. Okay, so from there we're going into our side plank. You can either go feet on top of each other. I find it's a little bit easier to go foot in front. Making sure that you've got, again, straight line all the way through, so not sagging the hips down away from them in the air. If you find this one too hard, you can do the bent knee option, so having the knees as the first point of contact on the floor. Now I'm wishing I'd taken my sweater off before we started this round. So that's 30 seconds to go. 
Now, we often tend to be, well, we would say necessarily weaker on the side, but obviously we're using certain muscles. So these probably feel harder than the front ones. Like I say, take a break when you need to, come back to it. So if you can't do a minute, absolutely fine. Set yourself a goal, set yourself a challenge, um, but don't use the wrong muscles and don't push so hard that you can't move tomorrow. 10 seconds to go. Last five, come on, you can do it. Lovely. Onto our backs, this is one that we don't do so often, into a supine plank. So squeezing those glutes, staying nice and strong all the way through. Keeping the core engaged, feeling all those muscles. It's a weird one, you kind of feel all the muscles all through the body working. As you get more tired, you start to feel it more through the core, but you definitely feel it everywhere. Keeping on breathing. So that's halfway. <laughs> I can't quite see the clock. 20 seconds to go. So keeping nice and strong. Core all the way through. Feeling all those muscles, get those glutes working to stop your bum from hanging down towards the ground. We've got last 10 seconds to come and then we're onto the other side. So you're up. Side plank. Can't remember which side you did. If you do the side you just did, it's going to feel like you've already worked it. If you do the other side, you won't feel so tired. So, into that side plank, pushing up. As I say, I would go elbows rather than getting the shoulder too tired too soon. And then after this, we're going back to our glutes and we're repeating the same sequence that we did before, but with progressions if you want them. If you found that first round hard, challenging enough, then don't progress. Stay where we were. So work to your level. Like I say, we challenge yourself. Don't just accept the status quo. Don't say I can only do it like this and only do it for 30 seconds. Always try pushing a little bit harder, but if it's, if it's too hard, go back to what you know you can do with good form. 10 seconds to go. Last five, you can do it guys, come on. Three, two, one, good work. Time for the sweater up and then we're going back into our glutes again. So this time, lying on your back again, toes touching to the fingers. Now if you want to, stay with how you were in round one, either just two-legged um, glute bridge or single leg glute bridge. If you want to progress it, then we're going into raises. So let's go. Tyler so decided not to listen to me, but anyway, it is timing, you just won't restart. <laughs> Don't worry. That's 30 seconds down, so make sure on each one you're pushing all the way up to the top. And again, that end range, this bit here at the top, is the bit where you're working the hardest. So don't just spend your time all the way down here at the bottom, going, oh, it's good, all right. Make sure you're pushing all the way up to the top. Hold it for a second at the top there. And then pushing up and down, nice and slow. And controlled, lovely. Swap sides and onto the other side. Now I'm just going to do it as a hold on this side just because I don't really trust um, my quad on that side to go up and down. So, but you can go back into those raises up and down, pushing through. So get that glute. So it's the glute on the bent leg side that you want to feel working. Now, if you've been doing these with me all the way through lockdown, you should be getting quite strong bone muscles by now. I've certainly got stronger bone muscles than I've ever had, and that's after doing years of squats and deadlifts and lunges and whatever else, all weighted stuff. But I find that these really focus on the technique side. It's easy to be strong, but you're not necessarily engaging the muscle quite in the right way with the same quality. So I certainly know that I've progressed in terms of my strength and stability um, whilst, whilst in lockdown, which is pretty cool without access to all those weights and everything. So I know it's not where any of us want to be right now, or probably not, 
but using it as a time to invest in your body is so important. And I know so many people, um, let's go into, so again, you can just go for the same clams as you did before, or if you want something a bit different, we're taking it into that top clam position, but then we're rotating the leg. Imagine you're on a kind of spindle here, and the knee staying in the same place, but the foot is going up and down. So we're just rotating internal, external rotation essentially through here. So it should be working in the same place. It takes a little bit of time to feel it working, but then once you've got it, it certainly works. And you want to make sure that you're keeping this knee pretty much where it was. So it's not that the whole leg's moving, it's just that the lower half of the leg is moving. Okay, everybody feel that in your glutes? Hope so. Um, what does it say? So yeah, seeing, not to necessarily, I think everybody's getting absolutely sick of trying to find the positives in lockdown and everything, but do see it as an opportunity. You can't do all the things you want to be doing, but what can you be doing? You can be spending some time really building that bulletproof body, either ready for when we get out again on the other side, whatever that will be, but also I know a lot, more, a lot of people are doing actually more training than they did previously, or more focused training, maybe working harder if someone's with, or whatever it is. But you can't just keep on increasing your training limitlessly, if that's a word, without also giving the foundations in there. So partly doing lots of good base training to make sure that you're really setting that base, so easy rather than just fast stuff, but also the strength and conditioning. So making sure if you are doing more running than you were previously, that you're giving the body the support it needs to do that. So really investing in things like your glutes, your core, all those stabilising muscles that are going to help give you that strong body to carry on doing all that additional training. Lovely. From there, into a four-point kneeling position, if you're going to cushion your mat, you stick your knees, into a four-point kneeling, and pushing the foot up towards the sky. So again, as we go through here, it should be whoop, that glute that the foot's pushing towards the sky that we can feel working. So again, we're working on hip extension. Now, if you look at, I wasn't doing a very good demo there, if you look at that, that is not extended. That is my leg straight. It's only when I take it to there that it's extended, but I need to make sure I'm also engaging my core at the same time, because otherwise I'm doing the equivalent of tipping the water out the front. Obviously, I've changed my body by 90 degrees, so it's tipping out anyway. But what you don't want is if that leg goes up for my pelvis to be going that way. My pelvis wants to stay uh, like that, <laughs> neutral like that. So getting, making sure that that foot is kicking back if I was an upright right now behind my body, I made that all very complicated by being on my front whilst talking about hip extension, but I hope you understand what I mean there. Okay, and swapping onto the other side. And again, making sure the core is engaged, and then making sure we've got true hip extension, making sure that hip is extending, so we're going from that, that straight line, there we're going behind the line of our body. Making sure that core is engaged at the same time. And also making sure the core is engaged to support us as we do this. If you're feeling your core working more than your glutes, then just focus on maybe building up the core a bit more in the future, but also just double check your positioning. Now, you can make it easier by slightly, I've just realised I've done it, my weight's shifted to one side, I can make it much more challenging to the core, I'm doing this in the next round, in case you're there already, by making sure that my hip is above where my knee should be. So you can make it easier by making sure your body is over the middle of the centre, the knee there, make it harder by keeping yourself to, um, uh, word. Well, yeah, as if my knee was there. I'm making everything sound much more complicated than it needs to be today. I'll explain that more in the next round anyway. Okay, we are back to core. So, either, same as before, you're going to do your normal plank, front plank, side plank, um, etc. Or, we're going to progress it if you want. So, starting off in our front plank, um, again, you can go bent arm or straight arm. 
gonna go back just through, as I say, take those shoulders. You come around this way so you can see me better. And then from there, we're just doing feet walking. Now, let's go. Now then, you might notice a double use here. We could just take the foot off the ground as a way of engaging the core. That's certainly getting the core working by introducing that instability. It's instantly making it a lot harder to do that plank. Or, if you want to, you can get the glutes working at the same time. So I'm taking that leg up into hip extension. So completely up to you, whether it's just a core workout, either just holding a normal plank or just taking the foot off the ground to introduce instability, or whether we're also making it a, a glute workout by taking the foot into hip extension. Either way, in terms of the core side of things, you want to make sure as you introduce that instability, that your hips stay stable. So you don't want your hips going side to side. You want to try and keep the hips stable. And you want to try and raise the leg with control rather than just flinging it. Lovely. Into side. Now this time we're doing um, 30 and 30. I'll show you what we're doing. So either basic option, not basic, it's pretty hard. It is a side plank. I would say feet in front of each other, but however you find most comfortable. Or you're going to go side plank, but just your bottom leg down for the first um, 30 seconds. Again, straight arm, bent arm, your choice. Then we're going to swap onto the other side. Don't worry, you're still going to get a minute on each side, but we're going to break up the two halves, two 30 seconds, because it gets quite hard. Again, feeling it on my arm probably more than anywhere else. Lovely, so exactly the same on the other side. So side plank, either both feet down, or if you want to make it that bit harder, bottom leg down, and you'll probably be feeling the glute on that side working, as well as the core. 15 seconds done already. Good work. Lovely. Back to the first side, and this one is even harder. So again, choose your option. But this time I'm going bottom foot, sorry, top foot on the ground. So really up to you where you put that other leg. I would probably stick it behind. So I've got my top leg on the ground and the bottom leg, it looks like it's on the floor. I can assure you it's not. I can assure you it is working quite hard. Lovely. Now that is working again all the way through, swap sides. All the way through my core. Harder work because there's less on the ground. I've got to work more through the core to stabilise it. So I can feel it down there. But I can also feel it down the inside of that leg that's on the ground doing that stabilising work. So. Really working all the way through the body. Oh, I'm definitely weaker on this side. Got about five seconds to go. Whew. Yeah, definitely weak down there. Good work, guys. Quick break, then we're back to the beginning, back to those glute holds. Now then, if you have a band, one of these guys, you can stick it on now for glute hold. Don't worry if you haven't. Just carry on as you were. If you have though, Stick it on, I tend to go either just below or above the knee, whatever works for you. And we're pushing up into our glute hold. Now if you're on a two-leg glute hold, you're going to do your two-leg glute hold as normal, but you're just going to push the knees out. So now you're getting a bit of resistance in here, as well as your normal glute hold pushing up. Deep down, if you're on a single leg, you're just pushing those legs slightly apart and holding there. For those of you who want to, we're going to do a 30 second hold, 30 second raises. You again, work to your level. So we're just pushing gently out, nothing too dramatic, nothing too hard. Pushing the knees apart so we're getting control from the glutes at the side here, this glute knee muscle that we're about to work a bit more. Um, but we're also 
feeling it working through the glutes at the back there. The main muscle working is that big glute muscle at the back, glute max. Now, if you want, into pulses. So we're coming down and pulling out as we go up. So if you've got that band on, don't worry if you haven't got the band, but if you've got the band on, you're coming down and then pushing up and slightly out. Nothing too major, but just again, getting those side glute muscles working at the same time. Last five seconds here. Lovely, then swapping over onto the other side. So again, make sure the feet are in the right place. Pushing up into that single leg and pushing the knees just slightly out to get it working at the sides. Making sure you keep your breathing nice and relaxed, making sure it's always the right muscles doing the work. So get those glutes doing the work, not the lower back. If you're feeling it in the lower back, refocus on your technique, refocus on your position. Think about pushing that bum up towards the ceiling. Think about pushing through the heel to get the glute working. And if you're starting to arch through here, think about drawing the hip bones towards the nose. Last 15 seconds. Oops, sorry, I haven't gone into those pulses. That's I'm not going to do them. But if you want to, go down, push out, down, push out. So that we're getting that glute working in its role of pulling out as well as pushing behind us. Lovely. Now if you've got your band, we're going to some band walks now. If you haven't got a band, carry on with the clams. So you know with your clams, you're lying on the floor, you're doing this action. If you've got a band, then we're going into a band walk. I'll just tend to put the band a little bit lower. Starting off walking forwards and backwards, really up to you. So as so long as you are pushing the knees apart and keeping the knees pushed apart, that is all good. So again, think about those line bouncing muscles. We've got our hands on our hips, thumbs pointing down, about where our thumbs are. That's our line bouncing muscle, that's our glute knee muscle that we want to be doing the work of pulling out. Let's go up onto toes now. Doesn't matter how many steps you're taking, just work in the available space you've got. Let's go a bit more push out this time. Push, even when we're pushing out, we never want the knees to come back in. So we're pushing out, but this is our base position, never coming into that position. So the knees are always above the ankles or wider. Push out, push out. And then let's take it side walk. Love it. If you're in clams, top sides now. Band walkers, we're carrying up. So keep pushing out. Let's go. Side shimmy, other side. You choose the route that works for you. It's just about keeping those knees pushing out from each other. You can just do a few on the spot. Got about 30 seconds to go. Last five, you can do it if you feel those bum muscles working. Lovely, band off. And then back into, now this is what I was gobbling on about before, into a four point kneeling position. And from here, we're going to take one leg up and we're going to just pulse it behind us. And as I was saying before, we're making sure we're taking it into extension. So we're not just pulsing it there, we'll work our glute there. But you can see, as soon as you get to that point of extension, how much harder it's working. Now, if we want to get our core working at the same time, we want to make sure, if I'm in my four-point kneeling now, this hip is over this knee. As I lift the leg, I want the hip to stay over the knee. I don't want to put this knee now in the middle. That makes sense? So you can feel how much harder your core's working here compared with here. If you just want to work your glute, because that's hard enough, then you can shift over onto the stabilizing leg, the knee that's on the floor. If you want to get the core working as well, then make sure you keep your hips central. Hope that makes sense? Let's go. 
So similar to what we were doing before, but this time we've got a straight leg rather than a bent leg. This becomes harder for us to control the whole action and to make sure that we've got that glute working. But you can see any swimmers there, you can see what this is very sort of similar to that swimming position with that flutter leg, flutter kick behind you. I'm not doing very well at my fluttering here. It's quite a difficult one to do in terms of coordination. Um, but yeah, if you're practicing for swimming, get that toe pointed. Think about that flutter. And remember, when we're swimming, we always want to make sure we've got that leg straight behind us. We don't see so many people kicking like that with a bent knee, which as well as being more wasteful in terms of the energy and everything, is also creating a load of drag under the water. So perfecting this action, this, this hip extension and straight leg kick, not locking out the knee, but just a relaxed straight leg, is really, really important for your swimming. Ditto, definitely important for the running. So, swapping legs. That's a bit easier to pulse on that side. Pulsing, again, making sure that we're into hip extension. So we're taking the leg behind the line of the body, or in the case of being on all fours above the line of the body, and that we're making sure we're keeping the core engaged to protect the back, but also to make sure that we're not um, losing that neutral pelvis. So think about keeping that pelvis, drawing hip bones up towards the nose, rather than letting it arch out like that. So core engaged all the way through, flutter kicking behind. About 15 seconds to go. And then we've got our core challenge coming back again. The last five. Feel that bum working, feel control, again check, oh, I shifted, try and make sure that those hips are central over the mat, lovely. Okay, so back to your core, this time we are um, going for a normal front plank, straight arm or bent arm, I'm going to go straight arm, just going to give you a bit more room to work with, I'll show you why, and then from there we're going into knee to the front, knee to the front, knee to the elbow, knee to the elbow, okay? If you want to just go knee to the front, no elbows or just the elbows, fine. If that feels too hard, as I say, work to your level, just do a normal plank. Um, if you prefer bent arms, absolutely go for it. Here we go, so one minute, take breaks when you need to, keeping the technique good, rather than carrying on just for the sake of it, but losing your technique. Don't worry at all about what order I think I went elbows first, didn't I? Doesn't matter at all what order, so long as you're roughly doing those four movements. Halfway already. Squeeze your shoes, trying to make sure that you're not doing, that you're not moving to get the knee up. So you're not sort of, uh, doing a crunch. Keep the back flat. As you bring the knee just as far as it will go, that will partly be hip mobility. Last 10 seconds, guys, we can do this. Last three, two, one. And I'm just going to do the other one for good luck. Good work. Whew. Okay, so back into side plank. And this time we are going with the bottom leg on the floor. And then if you want, we're going half the time, raises on the top there, and half the time I'll show you what's coming after that. So we're doing 30 seconds, swap sides, 30 seconds, swap sides, and again. As always, work to your level. If you want to have both feet on the ground, absolutely fine. Nearly there, last five on this side. Make sure that hip's not sinking down. Whew. Swap sides. Keep that breathing, keep that hip high. Last 10 seconds on this side. Oh. Swap sides again. Obviously you could just flip over onto the other side. Um, so from here, you can have bent knees down if you need them. We're going into raises. 
So feeling all of that side, working out as we raise up and down. Obviously, if you have any injuries, any reasons you shouldn't be doing these exercises, then just do the exercises that you know are good for you. So you can always replace with other exercises you've been told if there's reasons you shouldn't be doing any of these. So it's nice. We're nearly there, guys. Last 15. Last 10. You can do it. Last five, even if you're on a break. Let's join in now. Hold side plank, you stay sure you're absolutely fine. Three, two, one. Woo! Good work. Give us a round of applause. Okay. Let's take it into cool down. So, we definitely work with glutes. Let's do one on the back, pulling that fly in, getting that stretch into the glute there. So, nice deep breath. Getting the breathing under control. Congratulating yourself for what you have achieved. If you haven't managed to hold them for as long as you wanted, don't, don't beat yourself up about it. Just set yourself that challenge to come back and work on it. If you notice that one side was weaker than the other, then be aware of that. Think about building into future workouts. I can't stretch on that side. What side? I'm standing on this side. Um, building into future workouts so that you always just do a few more reps on your weaker side. Like I say, if you think you have got imbalances, if you look back to Tuesday's workout, so it should be the last video up in the video section, then we were timing exercises on each side, so we were starting to work out whether we had imbalances to our core on one side, in terms of our legs, in terms of our glutes, hamstrings and everything. So go and have a look back through that, see what you can work on. Because all the, yeah, Emily is in here, so Emily, this one's for you. Pigeon stretch, so taking it's difficult to show you, but we've got one leg out in front, pressed in front, pushing down, and then work to your range. So if you can get flat on the floor, I certainly can't right now, um, go for it, but just working through, feeling that stretch all the way up the side there, but that stretch probably on the inside as well. Nice deep breaths. Breathe into that stretch, so as you feel it getting tight, just think about taking a nice deep breath into the tightness. See if you can ease down a little bit longer. So we need to get in the habit of making sure we actually hold our stretches for long enough to make a difference rather than just doing them for a few seconds and moving on. Do so you feel it release? Just take a few deep breaths, breathe deeper into it. So if you swap onto the other side, no, I can't bend the leg on the other side, but swap onto the other side to stretch through on that other side. Um, just in case anybody is interested, I'm doing one-to-one -one, um, personal training sessions now, on obviously not face-to-face, -face, but live via Zoom, so there's a link up on my Facebook page now. If you're interested either in finding out more or booking on, um, you can book on directly for, for one session or there's um, discounts if you want to book in, in uh, bulk, that sounds very strange, <laughs> um, like on Twitter bowl, uh, if you want to book more than one session at a time within bulk booking rates. Um, so yeah, give me a shout out through Facebook or, over, or through my website, there's a link on Facebook now if you are interested. Brilliant, so let's go into just um, stand or kneel and then taking one side up and giving a big stretch, so just working through, stretching down the side there, we've certainly been working through there today. Similarly, as I always say, if you've enjoyed the workout, please do share it with other people, like it, tag it to anybody else, let people, other people know about the sessions, um, so that other people can start building those stronger, more stable and hopefully more mobile bodies onto the other side, and if you have any requests to stuff that you want to have in a future episode, episode, not really, in a future session, please do pop it in the comments, um, either message me on Instagram or in the comments on Facebook, and I will see what I can do to work those in. See, I haven't forgotten about the run drills, I just haven't been able to do it with my dodgy leg, so I will add those back in in the future. Hopefully the leg will be back in, option, in action by next week. Good work, guys. Really fun working out with you. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you managed to set yourself some new targets and a few achieve a few challenges there. Um, keep working on it. Keep building those stronger bodies. Don't forget your clapping at 8 o'clock tonight. And I look forward to seeing you either 6 o'clock on Tuesdays or 1 o'clock next Thursday. Take care.